Really much tervepä terve again. In this screencast video I'm going to show you how to make uh, a Dynamics CRM365 web API call against the CRM server configured in IFD mode. So this is an on-premise CRM server as it's configured for claims-based authentication and IFD. That means that the authentication is going to be um, OAuth2 uh, access tokens uh, used against the web API. And I especially wanted to use the on-premise server this time instead of uh, CRM online and see how it works with the uh, new ADFS 2016 server and service over there. Okay, so here's a brief overview that uh, what I'm going to show you today in this screencast. Uh, so I have a Dynamics 365 for 2016 actually on-prem server already configured in IFD mode. I have uh, ADFS 2016 uh, version 4 in, uh, already installed and configured to another server. And uh, what I'm going to show you is that uh, how to create an application group to allow access to the uh, CRM web API, uh, the OData endpoint. And we are going to use the OAuth2 uh, uh, method or function to, to uh, obtain the access token. Uh, this time we are going to use the resource owner credentials grant type, uh, which means that we require the application client ID and client secret from the ADFS when the client uh, application is registered. And furthermore, we need user ID and password to get the access token. And uh, for this, we are going to use Fiddler tool to obtain the token. And then <clears throat> after that, we are going to use the token uh, to make a very simple web API REST request to the Dynamics 365 web API using the access token in the header of the request. And finally, I'm, give you, I'm going to show you how to investigate the uh, JSON web token uh, contents and share a few tips that I've learned while uh, uh, troubleshooting one, one uh, scenario and project which we had uh, just recently regarding this, uh, this subject. So as you probably know, the Dynamics 365 or 2016 server did not support ADFS 2016 until very recently, uh, about a month ago in April 2017, Microsoft sub, uh, published a news that uh, the ADFS 2016 is now supported by Dynamics 365 and 2016. And in that, uh, at the same time, the more OAuth uh, grant types became available for obtaining the access token. Uh, the ADFS version 3 did not support client secrets, and that's the biggest thing uh, in ADFS 2016 that uh, kind of made this type of uh, access token request possible that I'm going to show you today. So as I mentioned, um, I have uh, CRM 2016 already available uh, and configured. Uh, I'm going to use uh, a test uh, tenant in our CRM installation, which only has one uh, active account as a data inserted at the moment, but that's fine for our testing scenario here. And what we are going to do first is that uh, we are going to go to the ADFS server. And uh, as you can see here on the left side, there is a new uh, navigation item for application groups. And first we are going to add a new group to the um, ADFS server. We're going to give it a name. Uh, let's use test CRM web API and we are going to use um, 
the type of uh, template that we're going to use is server application accessing a web API. Uh, so the server application will be Fiddler and SOAP UI today, which actually Fiddler requests a token and then SOAP UI is the actual application that uh, we are going to use to make the request against the web API. Uh, so we use that and click next. And next thing we are going to give is the server application name. So let's use a name, for example, SOAP UI test application. And as you can see here, we have the client ID, uh, which we are going to copy and paste into um, a text file. We're going to need it later on. And then the uh, redirect URI. This is something which is not very important here in our scenario when we use the Fiddler and SOAP UI as a, as a uh, testing tools. But once you use the real clients, then it's more important to give the redirect URI, which is uh, proper for that scenario. For, uh, for now, we just use some test URL so that we can get forward. In the next window, we are going to uh, generate a shared secret. This is the client secret, a new part of ADFS, which I mentioned earlier. This is the important part, which is used when we uh, make the request for the access token. So we are going to copy and paste it also to a text file for the later use. And uh, this is something which cannot be shown afterwards when the application group is created. Uh, it can only be reset, but not shown in the UI. So that's why it's good to uh, copy it to a text file for a later use. Next thing we're going to configure is the actual web API. So uh, this is the important part where we give the web API identifier for the resource that uh, actually identifies the Dynamics CRM web API. And this is the URL that we have here in our test environment, the tenant name, domain name, and then the latter part of the URL, which defines the uh, uh, web API URL for Dynamics. We click next and uh, here we in this window we um, give the uh, kind of like the access control for the web API. For now we're going to use the permit everyone to access this but we could use some other options also uh, multi-factor authentication or only to a specific group or that kind of uh, access control policy but for now in this test we use the permit everyone and finally uh, we give the application permissions here we can see that the SOAP UI test application is the name of the application that will be registered that's the name I gave earlier in the first window and the scopes below define that what kind of uh, uh, permit scopes we are going to grant for this application. For now we just use the open ID. And that's pretty much it. This is only the summary of the things we defined and the application group is now successfully created. So now what we have is the uh, client ID and the uh, client secret which we need to use in the uh, request for the access token. So now we go back to the uh, server where I have the um, uh, Fiddler and SOAP UI installed. So I have the kind of like the request already here ready made. So I just copy and paste the client ID to the request and also the client secret to the proper part of the request. And now we are going to use this and go to the Fiddler tool. And uh, if you don't know Fiddler, it has uh, 
on an HTTP request composer where we can use kind of like um, uh, uh, HTTP requests to simulate and uh, actually make the requests. Uh, here is the important part of the uh, request. You specify the uh, STS service URL and the latter part of the URL is the OAuth2 access token service uh, into which this request will be made to. And within the body of the request, we paste the actual um, request uh, as a text. So here's the client ID secret, then the user, uh, the resource we are going to make the request for, that's the CRM tenant URL, uh, URL encoded of course, and then the username and password of the user. And finally the grant type, which is password in, in our case. So we execute the request and we get HTTP 200 return code, which means it was successful. And uh, if we investigate the kind of like the response, we can see that it returned the access token. There's the token type of bearer and uh, uh, the uh, expiration, also the resource into which we requested the token. There's the refresh token, which can be used later on for programmatic uh, token refresh. Uh, so these are kind of like the important parts of the, of the response. For now, I'm just going to copy and paste the, um, uh, the access token, that's the JSON web token, uh, which we are going to investigate more closely a bit later on. So the next part of this uh, test is to make the actual request against the Dynamics 365 web API. And naturally in real life scenario, there will be an application uh, uh, where from where this uh, request is going to made from but for now in this test I'm going to use a SOAP UI tool which is quite handy in terms of uh, simulating these requests so I'm going to start a new REST project and uh, for that I'll need to give the URL of the um, of the API we are going to make the request for so I have it here ready. I'll paste it over here so we can see it's the dynamic CRM tenant URL appended with the API, web API URL. And now it starts a blank um, uh, REST project. And as we know we need to authenticate against the web API. So we add a new authentication and we use the OAuth2 authentication type. Uh, SOAP UI actually has some UI based tools for making the access token request. But what I've noticed while uh, doing the project uh, recently is that uh, these access token requests made from here actually don't return or uh, get the ac at least the resource owner password credentials properly. For some reason it's returned only the uh, um, well incorrect uh, access token type which always gave 401 uh, authentication error when using that against uh, with the request against the CRM web API. But instead now we are going to use the token we retrieved using the uh, Fiddler tool earlier and for the actual request we are going to append very simple account select rest request against the API. So we select the top three accounts from the CRM. As I showed you earlier, there is only one account in that CRM. So that's why um, 
it should return only one uh, account when we do the request. So I copied the um, access token from the Fiddler response to the access token window here in SOAP UI. We have the URL ready with the method, the HTTP method, method that we are going to use is, is get. So the token will be in the header of the request. And now we see what happens once I uh, make the request. And actually now this is a good simulation. I forgot one thing uh, from the from the application group earlier. Uh, I need to give uh, the claims which the Dynamics CRM requires. So that's why I get the 401 unauthorized error because the um, uh, token did not contain the claims which the Dynamics CRM API requires. So I go back to the ADFS server now and configure the application group a bit more. So I open the properties and then we check the web API properties and there's a tab here called issuance transform rules and for this I need to give the claim descriptions which the dynamic CRM requires so as you know there are three claims which are required by the dynamics those are the primary SID UPN and then the Windows account name so I give uh, uh, three rules first two are the pass-through rules so first one is primary SID and we specify the claim type here. The next one pass through again and this will be the UPN. And it's here. The third is the Windows account name. And that's going to be a transform from Windows, let's see, transform Windows account name to name. And uh, incoming is the Windows account name from the client. And we pass it over as a name claim type. And now we have this one set up. And as we edit that uh, uh, application group properties, we need to make the um, Fiddler request again. Actually, I can show you before I make the request again, the difference now between the token now and then afterwards. So quite good tool for examining the JSON web tokens is uh, jwt.io uh, website. So if I paste the token here, I can see the kind of the contents of the token. And here we can see that there are no claims uh, included in this, is this web token. And that's the reason why we get the 401 unauthentication error. So we go back to the Fiddler and do the request again. I have it here. So we examine, uh, execute it again. And now we inspect the re uh, results and we can already see that this time the token is a bit longer. So let's go back to the token examination tool and try again. And as we can see, we have uh, three claims this time in the token. There's the primary SIT, UPN and the Windows account name which are required by the Dynamics uh, Web API. So this time, let's see if we have better luck in terms of the, making the SOAP UI request against the Web API. So we paste a new token to the um, uh, SOAP UI tool. We have the URL ready, get method, and then we make the request and it should return the JSON uh, response as a JSON so we can change the uh, um, 
response window here to show the JSON and as you can see there's the one account there from my test tenant in the CRM returned as a result and uh, basically our test this time was successful <clears throat> after we added the, um, the um, claims to the to the application group so in summary um, what I showed you here was the steps required to make the uh, successful web API request against the Dynamics CRM web API using the OAuth2 uh, access token uh, included in the header part of the actual web API request to make the successful authenticated um, um, request against the web API. Um, also, I shared a couple of tips for the uh, uh, from the knowledge that I've gathered in our projects when troubleshooting this type of uh, these type of uh, things, uh, especially related to the uh, SOAP UI tool, Fiddler, and uh, uh, access token types. So thank you for watching the video and uh, hope you get some help out of this uh, if you run into similar issues that we have run, run with this.